Good morning. We make our beginning today in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We conclude our week with looking at how Christ reveals himself in his powerful word by focusing our attention today on the powerful word of our prophet, Jesus. I want you to think about this question. The question is, are you easily influenced by other people? And I guess going along with that is, what are the characteristics that someone must display in order for you to choose or decide to follow them? If I said the name to you, David Koresh, some of you might know who he is. If I said the name Vernon Howell, my guess is no one would know who he is. This right here is a picture of Vernon Howell, but it's also a picture of David Koresh. His name was Vernon, but he changed it to David when he was 31. I'll come back to that why he changed his name in a little bit. But David Koresh was an American cult leader who said that he had the gift of prophesying. He began claiming that he could prophesy and wanted to get more followers. And over time, he changed his name when he was 31 because he wanted to get more followers to the name of David. Uh, and many people followed him and said that, yes, he is our leader and he is our Messiah. He took on the name David because it came from the lineage of King David from whom the Messiah would descend. He chose the name Koresh because it was the biblical name of Cyrus the Great, the Persian king who was named a Messiah for freeing the Jews during the Babylonian captivity. By taking on this new name, he was proclaiming himself to be a spiritual descendant of King David a prophetic figure who was here on earth carrying out a heavenly duty. Koresh would often travel to many countries. He would visit college campuses, preaching and prophesying messages of the end times. And he would preach his message to people who were already familiar with the Bible and knew God's word. His message, again, focused on the end times, the revelation. He convinced his followers that he was the next Messiah, the one that God had chosen to come to earth and lead his followers to eternal life. He convinced people from all over the world to come to his ranch in Waco, Texas, and to lead a frugal life of prayer. He was preparing them for the imminent end days. Koresh truly believed that he was on a mission from God. Former followers of Koresh said that he constantly would tell his followers, his members, that the end of the world was coming. Again, that they were the chosen people that God had chose to survive on this earth. They were taught to prepare for war and that the end times, as predicted in Revelation, were near, but to be ready. After some years at his compound and him gaining more followers, rumors speculated that child abuse was going on within his compound and also that they were housing or stockpiling illegal firearms and illegal weapons. In 1993, his compound was raided. The raid lasted 51 days. And you might ask, well, why in the world would a raid not be over within one day? Why would it last 51 days? They took this situation as a hostage situation because there were so many children within the compound. Finally, on the 51st day, authorities went into the compound However, they were kind of stalled a bit because as they went, made their way in, fires had been started all throughout the compound. Authorities had to wait. Uh, finally, once the fires had settled a bit, they made their way in, and what they found were 79 of Koresh's followers were barricaded in the midst of the fire. They were found dead along with 21 children. Uh, David was also found dead inside the compound. So the question, when we hear things like this, or we read about stories like this, because this isn't the first one, this isn't the only time something like this has happened where someone claimed to be someone who they were not, I can't help but think to myself, what in the world would people be doing choosing to follow someone like this? Because to me, again, this is my own thought, he doesn't qu seem quite right. He might seem a little off. But yet he had a lot of followers that believed in what he was saying. But is that any different from you and I? How often do we choose to follow individuals that sometimes others might look at us and say, man, you might be a little off. Why are you choosing to follow that group of people or that individual? 
Sometimes, though, powerful, persuasive words, charismatic speaking, so oftentimes bring the weak or the vulnerable in. With so many false prophets and beliefs that are contrary to God's word, how do we ever cipher through who it is or what it is we are to follow? Our text today is taken from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20, where it reads, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet from among you, from your fellow Israelites. You must listen to him. For this is what you asked of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, or we will die. The Lord said to me, What they say is good. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their fellow Israelites. I will put my words in his mouth. He will tell me everything I command him. I myself will call to account anyone who does not listen to my words, that the prophet speaks in my name. But a prophet who presumes to speak in my, my name anything I have not commanded, or a prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, is to be put to death. So how do we truly know when someone is speaking for the Lord? There's two things that I want to take away from this section. Number one, we need to be able to recognize true from false prophets. Jesus urges us, in these two verses, in Matthew 7, to watch out for false prophets. They come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ferocious wolves. By their fruit you will recognize them. We also read in 1 John 4, 1, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. So how do we know if a prophet is speaking for God? How do you and I as sinful human beings know when our choices or the influencers of the people that we choose to follow are causing us to fall astray, fall further away from God's word? The question that you and I will always need to ask ourselves is, does the message that we're hearing or do the actions of the person or group that we choose to follow, does it line up with the Bible and does it line up with God's word? I am confident that there's going to be people Every day in your life, you are going to try to twist, add, or subtract from God's word for their own selfish ambitions. You and I may sometimes even be that person. Twisting what it is that God says, or neglecting God's law to make it say what we want it to say, or what we want his word to, say, to, to hear. This is what God warned us about in our verses. The second takeaway is that we are to follow the greatest of all the prophets— well, you and I luckily are well-versed, and we know who that greatest prophet is. And I'm not talking about the Simpsons, who in their time and over the course of their show, they have predicted quite a few things, which some of you always remind me of. Some of the things were that Siegfried and Roy would be attacked by their white tiger. Or that the U.S. would beat Sweden in the gold medal match in the Olympics. Or how about smartwatches before they were even thought of, the Simpsons predicted it. Or way back when, when they predicted that Donald Trump would become president. All very fascinating and amazing and fun to talk about. However, they are very coincidental. But what's even more amazing than all of this, what's even more fascinating is that we have a God whose word stood the test of time. And that is not coincidental. We see that almost immediately after the fall of man, God promised that someone would come. Beginning with the seed of woman in Genesis 3.15, numerous scriptures pointed to the one, the anointed, the Messiah of Israel. He would be the ultimate redeemer of mankind, saving this broken world, this sinful world, into this glorious, everlasting kingdom. The people who were there when Jesus performed his miracle, when he fed the 5,000, were definitely correct. When they said, surely this is the prophet who has come into the world. Through all of Jesus' teachings and his actions, some of the lessons that we are taught are to love God, love our neighbors as ourselves, forgive those who have wronged us, love our enemies, ask for forgiveness, and serve others. These are just some of the messages that we always can take away from our great prophet. But where does the responsibility lie in continuing this message? It is not just up to our pastors to continue God's message of salvation. 
It is up to our teachers. It is up to our friends. It's up to our family members. It's up to you. It's up to me to continue God's message of salvation. We have all been personally called to prophesy, to guide others towards God's cross or to God's word. All of the Bible's teachings point to Jesus as the one who saves by God's amazing grace, God's amazing love. And he calls us to share this good news every day with all people at all times. So who is it you guys follow? Who is it that you are so easily influenced by and you sometimes gravitate, gravitate towards? Is it because these individuals are popular? Is it because they're famous? Is it because they have money and they have a higher status in life? What are the reasons or the characteristics that you follow in life? And you guys as high schoolers right now have it difficult. You are being pulled in every direction every single day by so many different influencers in your life. From the friends you associate with, who hopefully you're finding those that are like-minded with you, that have the same drive, the same goal as where you want to be one day. To the music you listen to. And if we went back about an hour, an hour and a half from here, what was the songs you listened to in the car on the way here? What was the song you listened to before school started? What was the message you heard? Were you listening to Cole? Was it Megan? Was it like Sean Mine and you listened to uh, Bieber on the way here? What was the message you heard? And did that message align with God's word? And not to forget the ever constant danger of social media. The fact that some of you probably woke up and the first thing you did was grab your phone to see what's going on. And the fact that some of you probably fell asleep with your phone in hand. If you even went to sleep because you were probably so addicted to being on your phone. What is the image and what are the messages we are hearing all the time that is influence, influencing us to do what we do? All of these things help contribute to who and what you guys are and what you decide to do. What's exciting is right now that we're getting close to the end of the school year. Close meaning, I mean, we got some time left. But seniors, you're getting really close. Um, you're getting close to that point where you're getting ready to graduate move off to college or the workforce. And it's a scary time. And seniors, make sure you understand, don't use this as a time to start sliding. You still got a ways to go. Um, but the reality is that many of you are going to be off into the public spectrum. You're no longer going to be in the midst of like-minded folks and hearing God's word every single day. You're going to hear some brilliant intellectual professors, doctors, maybe even some new friends you meet who are going to give you some stories and tell you things that you know are probably contrary to the things that you have been brought up with and surrounded all your life. You, have, you need to find those who will remind you that Jesus is our true and greatest prophet and by the hearing his voice and by hearing his word, you will become closer with him. Remember that it's God who gives us strength to speak his love. As we see in John 12, 4, 12 verse 49 for i did not speak on my own but the father who sent me commanded me to say all that i have spoken so remember as you guys go off away from your families away from wisconsin lutheran away from all the comforts that you are used to that god's love is always there and he's continually going to love you and you will always find comfort in his true never changing word the word that has stood the test of time it is my prayer for you that you find time to be in his word every single day to help bring you closer to him, understanding that he is our true and our greatest prophet of all. Amen. Let's join together in singing verse 1 of hymn 282. Uh, her maiden name was Burroughs. She's a graduate of Wisconsin Lutheran, and she's the aunt of a former student, Kaya Burroughs. Uh, she recently passed away after a five-year battle with cancer. Um, and we joined together with the Wisco family to keep her in our prayers. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you knowing that you are in control of all things in our life. We pray together with the Wisco family to mourn the loss of Rachel Libby. 
We also rejoice in her victory, knowing that she is with you in heaven. We ask for Jesus' peace to be with the family, comfort them in this time of, in this time of need. Heavenly Father, we again thank you because we know you are in control of all things and you have a plan for us that we will one day be together with you, reunited in your kingdom. We give you the glory and ask for your praise in all that we do. And let me pray. Amen. Uh, please remain seated after the benediction for a short announcement. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen.